two is going to be given by Dana Morgan Barnes. Her speech title is Hold On Tight, and this is from the CC Manual number five, Your Body Speaks. Now then, I'll have her evaluator give us her objectives first, and then I have a little introduction. John. Dana is working out of project five from the Competent Communication Manual. Your body speaks. Her objectives are to use stance, movement, gestures, facial expressions, and eye contact to express her message and achieve the, speech, the speech's purpose and to make her body language smooth and natural. Smooth and natural. Now, if you know Dana, she's pretty much up for anything that's fun, adventurous, or even a bit crazy. A bit? <laughs> okay. Uh, over the years, Dana has participated in a few activities that may be perceived as crazy. Today, Dana will share a few of those with you, so hold on tight. Dana. When I say adventure, that can conjure up many different ideas for everybody. Adventure could be going overseas to a land you've never been to. It could be an extreme sport. Or it could be one of those life-threatening, possibly dangerous things that your life insurance has in the little teeny language. Go home and read it. I've participated in a few of these things over my life, and I'd like to share just a few of them. Some of you may not think they're crazy at all. First one, one of my very dear friends, this was when I was 30-ish, a couple years ago. <clears throat> this is not a humorous speech. <laughs> and my good friend and I, we decided we wanted to go skydiving. I'd always wanted to go skydiving. That was one of my things on the great list. I had no idea that it was a bucket list at that time. So he and I decided we were going to go skydiving. We found the place. We drove out there early on a Saturday morning. It was a beautiful San Diego day. As we pull in, we see a plane. And he goes, ha, ha. Well, you know, they always say, why jump out of a perfectly good airplane? I said, ha, ha. Well, that's just to scare everybody. That particular plane was held together with bailing wire and duct tape. Let me tell you that after a whole day of learning how to jump, uh, fall, roll, and what to do just in case your t parachute gets hang tangled in the tail or a hole in it, whoosh, I was ready. I was prepared. I knew what I was going to do. The only question was, which one of us was going to jump first? He said, oh gosh, how are we going to figure this out? And I said, oh, no, 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 I have figured it out. I shall go first. Because if you're sitting in the plane looking at me, I got to go. He goes, Phew, that helps because if you go, I have to go. Yes. So we strapped on our gear. Now, this was not a tandem jump, so it was not free falling. And I haven't made enough jumps to do free falling. So all my jumps had been static line to date and probably shall remain that way. So that means you hook yourself up to this little line and the jump master says, go. And if you're not ready to fly out that door, he pulls you back in because he ain't gonna push you. Whoosh. I knew instantly that my chute was tangled in the airplane. I was falling like a rock. I was gonna die. And I looked up and there was a beautiful blue and gold chute fluttering in the wind. It was the most amazing feeling, one that I have never had since. It is so wonderful. That's a pretty exciting thing, and I have to say, nothing else really matches it. I didn't tell my parents I was going skydiving until after I came back alive. <laughs> they would have found out the other way, one way or the other. The other thing that I did I talked to my dad one day, we were watching National Geographic back in those days, and it was about hot air ballooning. Hey, Pops, I said, wouldn't you like to do that? Yeah, looks like fun. So of course, I can't just let that go. I made arrangements for my mom and dad's anniversary to 
take them on a hot air balloon ride. Well, I didn't have much money back then. I could barely afford to send them. So I picked them up at 4.30 in the morning. Now, I won't tell you exactly what my dad said. He was a bit colorful <laughs> with his language. But he said, what are we doing at 4.30 in the morning? Get in the car, shut up. Off we went. So we pulled up into a bank parking lot to meet the guys. My dad, of course, says, what are we doing? Robbing a bank? We might as well have. We went to load the balloon. And the guy says, why don't you come with us? I said, mm, I can't afford it. Just go ahead, go, go, have fun. And he goes, look, we're going up in the balloon. We have two passengers and me. We got a lot of room. Get your tush in the basket. I did. Now, when the burner's not going, which can be deafening, it's silent. It is such a wonderful feeling. You're just floating. Now, the downside to hot air ballooning is you have absolutely no control where the balloon is going. <laughs> this 45-minute hot air balloon ride turned into a two and a half hour hot air balloon ride. We even had to flutter over a cactus patch while the crew brought us extra tanks of fuel. <coughs> and then off we went again. Yay. Later on, I said, Pops, wasn't that great? And he said, <clears throat> I'll <clears throat> censor it. He said, well, if I had known we were going on a hot air balloon ride, I would have said no. I was scared to stink in death. I had no idea. My poor dad, I scared him to death. Oh, well, I thought it was just an absolute blast. You know, when you're floating across and all the animals down below, dogs are barking and horses are running around in circles and cows, you know, they just do what cows do. We had a marvelous time and the guy actually said, would you like to learn how to pilot a balloon? Yes, of course I shall. That would be fun. So he was actually teaching me how to pilot a balloon. I'm not sure whether I was ever going to actually own a balloon or actually do this as a business, but heck, it was fun and I got free balloon rides all the time. So that was great. Now, even though I just barely hit 50 <coughs> years old, <laughs> on my 50th birthday, I decided I needed to do something fun, exciting, wild, and slightly crazy. I decided to drive a race car, so I did. So Richard Petty, remember Richard Petty? Some of you are old enough to remember Richard Petty. He has a race car driving school, and it was down in Colorado Springs at the time. Unfortunately, that particular track is a short track. It's only a half a mile around. What the heck is that about? Half a mile? Mile, whatever. It's very short. So right as you get going, you have to slow down. Get going, and then you slow down. But boy, was it fun. I was the only chick that day, I will admit, which was terribly troublesome for me. <laughs> and uh, so I got my little race car outfit, and I got my, my helmet, and they strap you in. You have to crawl through the window. Do you know that? You have to crawl through the window. Even at these little classes, you have to crawl through the window. I crawled in, they strapped me in, and then they put the steering wheel on, because when you get in, there ain't nothing there. <laughs> A little weird. So they teach you how to drive this race car. And you get to shift. And you slow down. Excuse me for turning my back to you. Oh, it was fun. I would have liked a longer straightaway so that I could have got even faster. Because I've gone 100 in my own car, so what the heck. So I got to up to 127, and it was a lot of fun. And I suggest that anybody, if you want adventure, go out and get it. It may not be skydiving. It may not be driving a race car. But find adventure in your life. Step out there on that limb. If it breaks, put on a parachute. Uh, thank you very much, Dana. And 